So um, um, I'll just sort of take it from the top, um, aim listed sort of clearly. Our focus um, at the moment is uh, Mozambique, uh, focus is heavy minerals. Um, where we're at is uh, within a what is a well-regarded, well-known heavy minerals province, so heavy minerals being uh, rutile, zircon uh, and ilmenite. They're sort of key uh, minerals uh, to produce uh, white pigments and ceramics, so very much uh, essential minerals uh, for everyday life. In fact, probably some of these panels here are, are coloured with uh, TiO2 pigments. Um, in terms of, um, we also have a, a large strategic shareholding in Electo Minerals, which has got a very interesting suite of uh, exploration properties in Mali, Ethiopia and Mauritania. I, I really like the, the, the projects they've got. And we're working on a, a solid, uh, developing a solid pipeline of new projects. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of stuff happening um, at the moment and uh, we hope that uh, we'll be able to share that with uh, shareholders um, as, uh, as developments arise. And, um, and finally, we've got a really good, strong, solid team um, of executives and board members. Um, really, I think, an exceptional group of people, and I'll go through that with you in a moment. Um, this just outlines the um, geographical spread of the projects. These are all the ones that um, are owned by Electo and our project down here in uh, Mozambique uh, on the east coast of um, East Africa. Interesting thing is, I just might just briefly say, um, this, this uh, coastline here is, uh, is um, uh, very heavily endowed with uh, world-class heavy mineral deposits. You know, one of the prime places in the world to be exploring for heavy minerals. 17.8% interest in electors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that can go up to just over 20% if we convert a convertible note and uh, those shares are issued. So um, depending upon the time of the day, between 17 and 20 per cent. Um, the PR people insist that I talk about myself. I'm um, a shy, retiring Australian, so I feel very uncomfortable with that, but I will. Um, I've had a long background in uh, mineral resources industry and uh, uh, have established at least two major um, Australian ASX listed uh, companies and effectively uh, use the, the same uh, modus operandi for um, all of these uh, companies started off always with a small company. In the case of uh, Savage Resources, it was one of the smallest uh, floats of 1987 before the crash. In terms of Hillgrove, that started off as a uh, actually reconstructed a company that was in administration, so literally starting off with a, a uh, starting point of zero and took that through to being a company with a market cap of about $250 million. Um, dividend paying was a very sort of uh, unique company in the Australian resources uh, context and finally also have done it in Powertil. Uh, again started off with a very small company and ended up um, by the time I left uh, constructing the third largest uh, fibre optic network in Australia. So I like building companies. I'm supported by a really good uh, board, Mike Johnson who's a uh, professor of um, environmental engineering um, there's myself, Charlie Cannon-Brooks, a fund manager, Dale Ferguson. Dale's a very key member of the team. He's an executive director. He's a guy I've worked with for about 15 years. He's a geologist and he's a really good geologist. He's a very good commercial geologist and um, he and I work very well together. He's based in Perth. So we've got um, you know, a great, great access to the technical capabilities that are provided to the mining industry out of Perth. So a lot of our assaying and analysis is being done there at the moment. It's really very handy. Also have a, a, a small executive team, guys who report to me, Paul O'Donoghue, um, he's our country manager in Mozambique. He, he was sort of thrown in as part of um, the package of tenements we bought there. Um, I've been just delighted with his capability and um, he's a very trustworthy individual and a, a safe pair of hands and really leverages my activity. Uh, Dr. Jurer um, is uh, one of the world's um, experts in the genesis of base metal deposits. He's sort of helping us with our base metal charge. So um, I hope to be able to report to you about some initiatives along those lines in the future. And finally, Michael McGarty, our CFO, uh, really very hard working individual based in uh, Manchester. We have a very uh, low, op low overhead operation. We don't have a corporate office here in London, although. I do use a desk in Arlington's office. 
So that's who we are. Just the key data. Um, our share price has moved around a little bit. Um, when we put this together, it was about six, just uh, just over six pence. It was last traded around about just below eight, uh, just below uh, eight pence. Market cap of about 10 million uh, pounds. Got 158 million shares on issue. We're um, actually in pretty good shape uh, financially, and um, we've raised around about uh, one and a half to two and a half million pounds over the last nine months or so. And um, I'm very intent on ensuring that uh, we are fully funded um, at least, you know, uh, at least one year in advance. Now, most recent capital raising was done at seven and a half pence. We're fully funded in terms of our existing um, activities uh, well through towards the end of the year, if not into, into the new year. We also have a number of warrants and options on issue, quite a few of them, but they've all got very high exercise prices. So um, if you're shareholders, I think uh, I'm a shareholder as well, I, I would very much welcome uh, the exercise of those options because it means the share price will be uh, 12 or 13 pence. Um, just in terms of our shareholder makeup, I got mine because I put real money into the company. I put half a million pounds into the company uh, last year as part of the recapitalisation process. Um, Praetorian Resources is a uh, fund manager, Fisk is pri private client broker, City Financial, Man uh, City Financial is a fund manager and Australian Abrasives and Paul O'Donoghue are the vendors of the uh, tenement in Mozambique. Just quickly run through, um, we, uh, we have sort of re recast the company, took our original uh, Mali and gold assets, vended them into Electo. As you can see, um, at the end of the day, we'll have about 170 million shares in Electo and a 20% shareholding. I like what they've got, um, and uh, I'd like to think that uh, that that portfolio holding will be worth a whole lot more than two million pounds um, in um, in the near future. Just focusing in on our our, our project, um, it's. In Mozambique, it's um, all about heavy mineral sands. Heavy mineral sands are ilmenite, rutile, zircon, um, and um, as I said, that's a, a key uh, industrial mineral that um, is almost ubiquitous in our daily life. Um, it's a key constituent in um, what they call uh, architectural coatings, but what you and I know of as paint, commonly, uh, plastics and, and paper and uh, consumption of it very much uh, revolves around uh, rates of economic growth uh, sort of globally. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, demand that comes, has come out of China. As the US comes out of its recession, I think that will be a major sort of fillip uh, to the consumption of, um, of heavy mineral sands. And I believe that, um, and I suppose this goes down to the, the whole uh, strategy of our concept here. What we're trying to do is uh, sort of grab large resources at the, the bottom of the uh, commodity cycle and provides us a great optionality in terms of um, uh, sort of value, uh, value growth as, um, as the commodity price goes up. Again, this sort of just basically outlines the, the sort of the key um, end uses for uh, ti titanium uh, dioxide based uh, pigments and, uh, and zircons. Um, this is uh, sort of a, um, a slide which sort of illustrates the fact that um, leading industry uh, commentator TZ Minerals, which is probably the world's leading uh, consultancy in uh, mineral sands, believes that there's a, a, a coming shortfall of production of, uh, of mineral sands. And I think we're sort of very well sort of placed uh, to you know, provide. Uh, some production in that uh, mooted uh, shortfall uh, that will be rising over the coming years. So it's sort of a good uh, supply-demand context for what we're doing. Zeroing in on uh, Mozambique. Um, why Mozambique? Well, it's a pretty big country, lots of opportunity here in terms of mineral sands. It's the fourth largest producer of TiO2 feedstocks in the world. Uh, Kenmare um, is actually, funnily enough, one of the only uh, producers of heavy mineral sands in uh, Mozambique. It's a 3,000 kilometre long coastline. Um, it's uh, enormously well endowed with um, uh, heavy minerals. And uh, really, we're the only active uh, sort of junior player um, in, the, in the country at the moment. And I think it really is, uh, provides us, you know, clearly we're not the first people there, but we really have a first mover advantage in terms of uh, what we're actually undertaking in terms of uh, real exploration activity in the country at the moment. It's a big country, but the good news is we're um, close to the port of Inambam. There's very good uh, 
infrastructure near us. And um, you know, in, in my experience of the country over the last 12 months or so, um, it's a refreshingly easier place uh, to operate in than you know, places like Australia or Brazil where I've done a lot of work uh, recently. This is just um, uh, some shots of some of our exploration that we did last year in terms of drilling. This is one of the local townships. Um, so this is not tiger country. Um, there's good uh, national highways that run through the area, good telecommunications, there are power lines, etc. Um, we bought the, the project re uh, relatively modestly. It cost us uh, 400,000 Aussie dollars worth of shares in Savannah. There's some milestone payments uh, which are payable as well. And again, um, I'll, uh, I'd be very happy to pay those milestone payments if we can sort of frame up some resources uh, along those lines. Um, zeroing in on the uh, deposit itself, and um, why did we actually invest here? And I think one of the major reasons is that um, Rio Tinto um, has discovered a, a very large heavy mineral sands deposit here. Uh, this is our tenement area here. And um, I think a, a very good place to discover a world-class ore body is next to another world-class ore body. And the, the overall theme is the way I've made a lot of money uh, for my shareholders in the past is securing um, projects with you know, large, you know, sort of considerable sort of potential, you know, albeit early stage. But what we want to do is sort of ride up the value curve by demonstrating, you know, the reality that there is the volume, there is the grade, and they've actually got uh, a deposit of um, a significant sort of global uh, global value. And that's essentially the game that we'll be playing over, the, particularly over the next 12 months. And what we want to demonstrate is what uh, Rio has proven here. Uh, in some ways uh, plays over into our tenement over there. Um, so as I say, looking to, and, and I suppose the key milestone is to frame up a jork resource in the uh, second half of, of next year. That's the main game. Just, just talking about the setting a little bit more, um, here again are the tenements, Rio and ours. This is the port of Inambam, which you've probably never, never heard of. Rather sort of charming town, but um, it is, uh, it is, a, um, it is a, a, sh a shallow water port, um, quite well protected. It's only about 30 kilometres away from our tenements, so it provides a, a natural um, outlet to export markets for us and um, this is actually the wharf at Inambam at the moment and again five minutes okay uh, again just sort of illustrates the fact that um, this in heavy mineral sands terms this is a relatively low cost infrastructure setting very very important um, I've got five minutes to go what I'd just really like to highlight is the fact that we did a, a, a exploration program here last year and um, a month or so ago we reported the first series of results that came through. The important point is to see that you know, we've got um, uh, intersections and grades which are suggestive both uh, of the, the grade of the resource is a similar tenor uh, to Rio's resource next door. We've got grades between I think 2% and about 3.5% heavy minerals and we've got um, intersections up to about uh, 30 metres of, of depth. The important thing is a lot of the mineralisation we've um, uncovered is, uh, actually occurs from surface, so it's literally from zero metres down to 30 metres, uh, you know, very, very sort of low stripping ratios. We're now going in with a, uh, a much more extensive uh, drilling program, program starting up in May um, and we'll start sort of zeroing in on some of these sort of prime areas here as probably is a, 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 a multi-campaign drilling program over the, over the balance of this calendar year uh, to frame up, that, uh, frame up that resource. That's just a little bit of sort of the drilling that's been going on. Um, and, um, and that's sort of really largely the story um, outside of the uh, investment in Electo. Um, good, good ground, uh, lots of potential. The uh, geology of this part of sub-Saharan Africa I think is uh, very good, uh, very prospective. I'll just sort of flick through here. What I'd like to say is it's very important for us, you know, we're going to continue to hit milestones. We've got um, what I think is uh, sort of three parallel uh, streams of news coming through. Clearly on our uh, mineral sands is one uh, new project pipeline and I hope to have some announcements out on that in coming weeks and of course Electo as well with its exploration as well so in, in terms of a junior explorer it's absolutely important to keep everyone's interest up you know and you know I'd like to be getting news out on a very sort of regular basis. 
so in summary, um, looking to grow, I'm personally looking to grow a very large company here. I'm uh, exclusively um, equity motivated. Uh, this is not a career for me. I want to get outcomes and results for me as a shareholder and for us as shareholders. I've got a very good uh, prospective uh, flagship project here at uh, Jangamo illustrative of the sort of the business model we'd like to employ. We're going to add a lot of value, I hope, um, during the course of this year. Uh, on the back of our drilling results, we've got a strategic 20% interest in Electo. We're very well funded. We've got to have a strong news flow, uh, low overheads, good team of people, and, um, and um, it's going to be, uh, I think, an exciting year for us. So, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming along and joining, and joining this exclusive uh, group of um, interested investors. Any, any questions? How much did you raise with the placing? Uh, 1.5 million. So we've, in total, since I came on board, we've raised two and a half million pounds. And you've got, how much cash have you got at the moment? Just over two million pounds. Um, it is 50, um, in terms of um, overheads before discretionary expiration, around about £50,000 a month, which is very much at the low end of the scale, um, I'm pleased to report. Yeah, and so the, we, we don't need to, to fund, unless something comes up, exactly. Um, sorry? You're full-time. Yeah, I'm full-time. Uh, um, one pound. Yeah. Can, can I ask what, what, you know, you've done it and made money before, obviously, which is fantastic. You know, you're over 50. Um, yeah. What motivates you to do it now? It's just it's enjoyable, and um, I've um, had some good experiences in the past, so I sort of like to repeat the experience, really. Um, yeah, it's just enjoyable. I've, I've done it generally in ASX listed companies. This is the first time I've been involved with a, an AIM listed company. It's a different marketplace. I found that really very interesting. It's um, great meeting uh, investors here in the UK. And I'm also you know, really excited about doing stuff in Africa for the first time as well. You know, I like Africa. Um, I think it's underexplored. It's highly prospective. Um, it's a refreshingly different sort of setting from a cultural point of view. And you know, it's just a new challenge, really. What, what would you say would be the biggest risk in, in any of these? Oh, I think. Um, stability in Mozambique. Um, oh, I think you know the, the worry uh, it's always worries me is that uh, the capital markets close um, because you know this this really has to be f fed by investment.